My name is Alfred Okoto Kidi. I'm the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Water and Environment. At the Ministry of Water and Environment, we observe the standard operating uh, procedure for COVID. As you enter the building, we have a station with clean water where you must wash your hands with soap. And as you get into the building, we also have uh, points where we check for your temperature and we also have the automated gate. If you are not wearing a mask, you cannot enter the building. And if your temperature is above normal, the gate will not open for you. In addition to that, we also observe the social distancing within the building. Uh, because of the need to hear me very audibly, and given that we are observing social distancing here, uh, I would therefore like to remove my mask and talk to you so that you are, can hear me very audibly. The journey of the Minister of Water started in 2007 when it became a fully-fledged uh, ministry. Previously, it was housed in the Ministry of Land, Housing and Urban Development. Prior to that, I think some of the functions were in agriculture, some of it was in works. But in 2007 is when the ministry became uh, a, a standalone uh, ministry on its own. Uh, originally, it was known as a department, it, and it was a department of water development, which was actually housed right down uh, just by the road, just opposite our office. We have had a number of uh, distinguished uh, public servants serving in this ministry as permanent secretary. We have people like uh, P.S. Dramadi, uh, Kabanda, P.S. Kabanda, P.S. David Obong, who served before me. I actually took over from him. And uh, the Minister of Water and Environment is actually composed of uh, three directorates. We have the Director of Water Development, which is tasked with the responsibility of developing the infrastructure to give water for drinking, give water for irrigation, and give water for commercial purposes. We also have the Director of Water Resources Management. That is the director that is concerned with the management of water as a resource. Because this resource, in as much as it looks to be a lot, because we have so many lakes, so many rivers, and even underground water, but these resources are finite. So we need to make sure that we manage it sustainably for future generations. So that is handled by Director of Water Resources Management, and they also look after the water quality. They look after the water quality. And then we have the Director of Environment Affairs. As the name suggests, it is charged with the management of our natural resources, that is the environment that surrounds us in terms of forests, wetlands, the riverbanks, the lake shores, fragile ecosystems, etc. But we also have a standalone department that is tasked with coordinating and managing climate change and climate change related issues. It's actually one of the newest uh, department in the ministry that reports directly to the permanent second. That is the Department of Climate Change. The Minister of Water and Environment also is proud to have its own home. Where we are now, we are not renting. This is a facility that was built by the Minister of Water and Environment with support from the central government. I'd like to appreciate the Minister of Finance for understanding our financing mechanism and availing, availing us the funds. It has taken us four years to come up with this structure and now we have a home uh, that accommodates at least a thousand people. And uh, we used to be dispersed all over the place in Nakawa, in Entebbe, in Indasa area, in Mukono, but now we are under, under, under one roof uh, right here. So it makes the management and the coordination of the ministry very, 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 very easy. We also operate in a decentralized uh, 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 manner. We have what we call the concentrated structures. Yes, the headquarters is here, but in the regions we also have offices. And these offices are miniatures of the Minister of Water and Environment. All the departments are actually 
there, including the agencies. So we have in Wakiso, we have the concentrated structure with all the departments of the ministry represented there. And we have in Eastern Uganda, based in Mbale, we also have in uh, Moroto specifically, because Karamoja is a, a difficult area, so we focus on it specifically. So we also have an office in Karamoja. And then for the northern region, we have an office in Nira. And for southwest and that kicked scale of western region, we have an office in Barara. And another sub office that is primarily project driven in uh, Fort Porto. Fort Porto. So that is the setup of the ministry. We also have agencies that are directly under the ministry. We have the National Environment Management Authority, or what is known as NEMA, that is the regulator of the environment. But we also have the National Forest Authority that is charged with uh, the protection and the management of the central forest reserves in this country and also providing support to communities for community tree planting. Uh, and then we have the National Water and Sewage Corporation, which is uh, operating in the large towns and they provide water and sewage services. Uh, uh, in those large towns. But we also have what we call umbrella authorities. Because we have so many uh, water schemes. There are actually more than a thousand schemes. National Water right now runs 257 uh, of those large schemes. Uh, so that leaves out so many schemes. And these schemes actually we manage it in a cluster with uh, a body known as umbrella organizations and we have them in you know, also the five regions uh, that I mentioned. And at the moment, they are either supporting or managing about 400 of these smaller schemes that are primarily robust. So that is uh, the setup of uh, the Ministry of Water and Environment. Our mandate is to make sure that we provide the policies and the guidance as far as water environment and climate change is concerned. We are also supposed to manage the water as a resource for this country to make sure that for future generation their resource is available. The resource is available. We are also tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that water for domestic usage, whether in homes, uh, institutions, are available. We also provide water for commercial purposes, especially for the industries and uh, the focus right now is to make sure the industrial parks that are coming up across the country have adequate water and sewage services. We also provide water for production purposes and this is water we use for irrigation. For irrigation and irrigation, we have them large scale, medium and small scale. The other one, of course, is the issue of uh, management of the environment. So we want to make sure that the wetlands, the forests, the river banks and the lake shores and the fragile ecosystems like the mountainous areas of this country, ETC, are protected and managed sustainably manage sustainably uh, and that is actually the focus not prevent people from but just manage them sustainably so that we can coexist uh, with our environment but on the side of the water resources also a number of our water resources are actually transboundary that is to say they are outside or they originate from outside the boundaries of Uganda so we have also to manage these resources together uh, with our neighboring countries. And we have, for example, the Lake Victoria Basin Commission that uh, helps us to manage Lake Victoria as a basin. We have the Nile Basin Initiative that is based here in Entebbe, in Uganda, that manages and is supposed to actually become an independent organization to manage the Nile Basin for the communities that make up uh, the, the Nile Basin countries, the Nile Basin countries. So some of our 
water resources management involves collaborating with neighboring countries uh, for the transboundary nature of our resource. So what are the achievements of the Ministry of Water and Environment over the years? Primarily the, the key ones. Let me start with irrigation. The irrigation potential for this country is more than 3 million hectares of land. But at the moment, uh, we are not irrigating more than 1% of this country. So we are not utilizing the full potential of our country. So we do not have the benefit of uh, producing all year round, which would make a lot of difference. And that is something that can turn the lives of our people, but also what can really commercialize agriculture, commercialize agriculture. So as a ministry, uh, we have already put in place the irrigation master plan, which was jointly developed with the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industries and Fisheries, and the master plan is already in place. We have also embarked on four major feasibility studies and pre-design for the entire country. We are looking at the entire country and see where we can have the large-scale irrigation schemes, the medium ETC. And that process is going on. Had it not been for COVID, I think uh, by now we should have finished it. But we are more or less at about 60% of doing those feasibility studies so that we know what we can do where and what type of irrigation infrastructure uh, we can put in those places. We have already completed irrigation schemes uh, in Olwen, in, in, in Nango. Agoro, the phase one is done. We are going to embark on another phase. We have also done Mubuku phase one, which is complete and functional in Kasese. We have also done Doho uh, in Butaleja which is already functional. We have also embarked on another five big irrigation schemes that are at various stages of completion. Overall, we, I would say we had more than 90% in terms of the physical construction, and these include uh, a scheme in Quen, in Ngenge. We have Doho too, uh, in Butaleja, which is expanding on the first one. We also have Mubuku 2 in Kasese, which is expanding on phase one. And then we have Tochi in Oyam, which is uh, virtually complete. And we have Wadilai uh, in uh, West Nile, specifically Pakwach, which we have already completed. We have also constructed a number of large dams that we are now going to engage with uh, the communities for irrigation purposes. And we have a large dam. Mabira in Barara, we have uh, Geregere uh, in Agago, and uh, there are others. We have also supported, especially using our ministry equipment, the construction of over a thousand valley tanks and valley dams, and this was primarily in the cattle corridors. Uh, that has enabled uh, the water stretch communities in the cattle corridors now to have water where the animals don't have to migrate for several kilometers to look for water and in the process get diseases. And I think that has tremendously also improved the productivity in the cattle corridor in terms of beef, in terms of milk, just to mention, mention a few. Um, we also are doing demonstration small-scale irrigations across the country. Uh, our target is to ensure that every district has at least a, a small-scale irrigation scheme that acts as a demonstration where the farmers and the neighbors can come and see what small-scale irrigation is all about and how they could also adopt it. But it also acts as a training, training ground. And our target is to ensure that every district has it. So uh, at the moment we have completed at least 65 and uh, there are another 65 at various stages of completion across the country. And uh, it is our plan to ensure that 
by the close of this financial year, those other 65 are also completed so that we have centers of excellence where people can learn about irrigation, see how agriculture can be commercialized, and see the outcome of commercialization of agriculture. Double Data. Airtel introduces Double Data, the biggest deal ever on smartphones in Uganda. Buy a smartphone, 3G or 4G, and get 100% data bonus from Airtel. Airtel is giving you 100% bonus data on all weekly and monthly bundles for every new smartphone connected to Airtel for the first three months. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to enjoy Double Data. Double Data, Double Data. Oh, Bino Viebiruma. Airtel, the smartphone network, regulated by Uganda Communications Commission. The other aspect that I also want to emphasize is the issue of the local content, because most of these, uh, especially the small-scale irrigation schemes, we have now developed the capacity of our own staff to do the design and do the construction of these schemes. And this has greatly reduced uh, the cost uh, of setting up uh, such schemes. And it has also created employment for our people. Because now we are employing our own to do this. And I think that is the way to, to go if you are supposed to tackle issues around youth employment. On the side of water resources management, one of the tools we use for management of the water resources is actually issuing out permits. Uh, we have progressed over the last five years to the extent where by now over 77 percent of the permits we issue there is now compliance. We simply do not issue permits but we also guide the beneficiaries of the permits of how to manage the resource that is uh, given to them based on the permit. And with uh, the 77% level of compliance, uh, that is actually great. Given that we have moved from a low base of about 28-30%. So I think that is also tremendous progress in terms of the water resources management. We have also created water management zones because this country primarily drains in four zones. And in these zones, we have what we call catchments. And we have created catchment management committees. And these committees are made up of uh, the local people in that particular area. We have the elected leaders. We have the civil servants who work in those districts. We have the religious leaders. We have the elders. And our emphasis is also to make sure that 50% of the people who serve on that catchment management committee are actually women. Because they are actually the people who get largely impacted when there is water scarcity. So we need their participation. So we have developed uh, the catchment management plans for nearly now 60% of the country, and 65% uh, actually. And it is our, 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 our plan to make sure that over the next two to three years, we have the catchment management plan for the entire country. And this now will serve as a blueprint for the development of water and water resources in this country. On the side of wetlands, uh, wetlands, we had and we still see a lot of degradation of wetlands. It is actually a very easy target, but it is also very fragile. And uh, the degradation of wetlands has been going on for quite a while, and uh, we have lost quite a bit of the wetlands cover. Uh, as I speak right now, we have had modest, very modest gain, to be honest. Uh, we have moved from uh, 8 to 8.9%. Our target over the next five years is to make sure that we push it to, to 15%. And what we are doing is 
we are first of all demarcating all the wetlands and uh, the boundaries of at least 480 kilometers has already been demarcated across the country and uh, we have also engaged the communities to make sure that they realize that they can coexist with the wetlands without tampering with them because you can use the wetlands wisely and in this regard we have a number of projects uh, like uh, one which is supported by the Green Climate Fund in Eastern and Western Uganda. And in this, the focus is, is, is on restoration of the wetlands so that they regain their original functionality. And uh, we have also done restoration activities uh, and also clearing of some of the wetlands that have been heavily invaded, like the Lubiji wetland here in Kampala, in Gulu de Oitino, uh, and uh, restoration activities are, are ongoing. And uh, we have coded all the wetlands, and these are actually, we are in the process of now finalizing the gazettement so that uh, the local authorities who are tasked with the responsibility of uh, providing land title do not erroneously issue land titles. Uh, in, in, in the wetlands. On the side of forestry, the Central Forest Reserve is managed by the National Forestry Authority and on a delegated basis by MOU uh, because of the presence of uh, parks in some of uh, the Central Forest Reserves. Uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority also is tasked with the management of uh, part of the Central Forest Reserve. Overall, we have stopped the loss of uh, forest cover. If anything, we have actually had a gain because we had dropped as low as 10%. But as I speak right now, the most recent data shows now we are at uh, 12%. For rural areas, our coverage is at 68%. We have managed uh, to access uh, the rural population by way of uh, gravity flow schemes such as the Buko, Bududa, Lirima. Uh, uh, and also underground waters using motorized boreholes since we are moving away from the hand pumps because they are not that efficient and we are at 70%. In urban areas our coverage is at 71% uh, in the urban areas it's a lot better than rural areas and uh, sanitation in the basic sanitation in the rural areas, we are actually at 78% um, in the rural areas, and in the urban areas, we are at 89%. Uh, but unwashing, especially in rural areas, we simply improve from about 34 to 38%, and in urban areas, from about 45 to now 71%. And this has largely been driven by the COVID uh, uh, drive which I myself very thankful for because it has actually spurred up uh, the hand washing with soap. Um, we also have uh, programs that we are implementing specifically for our brothers and sisters who are affected by insecurity from neighboring countries and we have programs for refugee and refugee host communities and under this we got support uh, from a number of our development partners such as the African Development Bank, the European Union, the German government, uh, the World Bank, African Development Bank and uh, we are doing integrated uh, systems for water and environment. We have programs in Namur, programs in Amuro, uh, programs in uh, Moyo, Ajumani, uh, Madiokolo, Arua, Nebi and also in Western Uganda and Isinjiro. Uh, to mention just a few. And this will take care of both the host communities and the refugees. We have a few challenges that uh, we face uh, in the course of the implementation of our projects. And these are largely uh, issues around land. Uh, land has become quite sensitive and Ugandans are not as generous as they used to be in the past by providing land for development purposes. And even where 
it is pretty obvious it's needed for development purposes. You still have uh, people not coming up openly or other people challenging uh, why this kind of in, uh, development should be there. We have also had, uh, especially at the local level, some of the leaders do not appreciate the importance of the natural resources like wetlands, forests and the river banks and they have actually been uh, issuing land titles in those areas. Uh, climate change is a big problem uh, that is affecting this country and we have to manage it because it's here with us. We have degradation of uh, forests and invasion of wetlands and uh, we are doing our best to cope with it with the limited resources we have at our disposal for enforcement purposes. But also the funding could be better because we certainly need more money. The NRM manifesto, uh, which is uh, President's manifesto, is to ensure that every village has a clean and reliable water source, preferably piped. And for us to do that, certainly the resources need to be enhanced. I think uh, the President, together with the Cabinet, uh, the Speaker of Parliament, they have all been advocate for environment. And I think uh, in every forum, whether it is the President, the Vice President, the Prime Minister, you actually hear and see them talking about the need to conserve environment and for climate change which I think for us in the Ministry of Water and Environment has given us a lot of support. So in conclusion, the journey of uh, the Ministry of Water and Environment uh, has been great. There's still a lot to achieve. And uh, I would like to say thank you to the government of Uganda for the support financially they have given us and also in terms of manpower for us to execute our mandate I would also like to thank our political leadership in the ministry for the support and the environment they created for us to actually execute our mandate as technical people. And uh, going forward, we want to push environment, the forestry to 19%, wetlands at least from 89 to 12%, and we want to make sure that every village in this country is covered with a clean and reliable water source and then the issue of climate change is addressed so that we are resilient and we are able to withstand climate change. I would therefore like to thank the management of uh, UBC for giving the ministry this opportunity to actually air out what we have done and what we are going to do. And I also like to thank all the listeners for the time you have given uh, for this particular program and uh, encourage you to listen to more as more government programs that benefit you and our community will be aired out. I thank you so much for God and my country. God bless you. Mm -hmm.